Good morning, my brethren in Christ, both male and female. This is uh, what I call as internet fellowship. And it's what the Lord put on my heart back a month or so ago. And I know that uh, I have my friend Vinny, my brother Vinny and Mark and my great brother uh, Anthony, because Anthony and I talk all the time. I talk to Mark a lot, and uh, Vinny I don't see as much anymore. I do talk to him once in a while. When he was here, we talked a lot. And then uh, I have Sharon, who lives across the hall from me. We talk, and and uh, I have uh, Cynthia. She uh, I don't see her as often anymore. used to see her when I was in Westlake quite a bit. But uh, she, I see her on Facebook and whatnot. And... Uh, we say hello once in a while. And then there's uh, uh, Karen. And Karen I met a long time ago, and uh, she sent me some stuff, and um, I used that, a lot of her stuff I used. And uh, I always thanked her for it. I thank the Lord to thank her for it. And uh, I know Karen loves the Lord greatly. I know she watches, and there's, there's others. People have, some people, they send kind of funny comments once in a while, and that's okay. But most people, uh, and, and I find out that some people watch it, uh, and I know uh, Mike up in my building that I live, he's on the third floor, I know he watches it. Um, uh, God, I am so terrible at names. I know them. I know their faces. And I, I after I think about it, I can think of the names. Um, Pat, she lives on the second floor. I know she watches. And last night I found out there was someone else on the second floor that watches. If they have the technology. Not everyone is into the computers and the cell phones. And Although most people have cell phones, but not always do they have internet with the cell phones. And these I put up on YouTube. Um... I try to do it every single day because I work with the Lord every single day. Um, and so I try, to, I try to make these happen every day, and he so far has helped me along to do that. Okay, anyway, here's our encouraging words today, folks. Okay? And the words say this. Grow strong in the light of my presence. And if you're in the light of the Lord's presence... I guarantee you, you will, over a period of time, grow stronger and stronger. Your weakness does not repel me. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? And we're all weak. Actually, the weaker we are, the more we need God. And the more we need God, the more he wants to help us. So he goes on, he says, on the contrary, it attracts my power. So weakness attracts his power which is always available to flow into a yielded heart. Quality yielded. You have to yield your heart to Jesus. That's not a choice. That's a prerequisite. And if you do that, then he can begin to help you. Okay? Because I do not condemn yourself for your constant need of me. Instead, come to me with your gaping neediness and let the light of my love fill you. Praise God. <laughs> it, it, it probably, and I would, and, and this is going to sound out of whack, but I would say that 99% of the people I've met in Christianity don't understand that. They can read it. They hear the words, because it comes from, from the Bible. That you know, they say, "Well, that's the truth." Okay. But that's all. This, it's intellectual. To know that in your heart will change your life. I don't care if you're a drug addict, you have food addictions, sex addictions, whatever. He will change your life. 
And in time, those around you that maybe knew the old you now know the new you. And a lot of them, because they're so ingrained in the world, <laughs> they don't like you anymore. <laughs> You're too weird for them. Because they don't see it that way. They still want it. They're still denying not the e existence of God, but they're denying that they have to do anything but just sit there and, and wait till the end. And I read a book once uh, that the Lord placed in my hands. He said that a lot of times people are become saved in the last breath of life when they accept Jesus Christ out of fear because they don't know what's there. I've been blessed in my life, and others have been blessed in their life. I know what's there. I know he's sitting right here with me, standing right beside me. He's inside me. His spirit is there. When I say this to other people, I, I've gone into churches and said that. They say, well, do you want to get saved? And I look at them and go, wow. They have no conception. And these are Christian people, teaching Christian people how to be Christians. That's not right. <laughs> Just not right. Okay, anyway, more words. A yielded heart, if we yield our heart to God, that's what he's telling us, does not whine or rebel when, going, when the going gets rough. And with Jesus, it's going to get rough. And at times, it will be very rough. Some of the things he has to teach us and we have to learn are not pleasant things. So we need to be grounded deeply in him to be able to weather that storm. But he weathered it already. So we are in him. So we're going to weather the storm. We have to. If you're in him, you can't do anything but weather the storm. Okay. Yielding yourself to my will. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I've got to go back here. It says, a yielded heart does not whine or rebel when the going gets rough. It mu the heart musters the courage to thank me even during hard times. And he's constantly saying that. In the Bible, he says it. In these other books I've read, you know, you have a bad situation in your life. Doesn't mean that's not a bad situation. Doesn't mean it's not going to make you feel sad. Doesn't mean it's not going to make you feel angry. Doesn't mean any of this. What your responsibility to God and Jesus is, you have to thank him. Because some of our best learning and our best steps forward towards heaven come from those hard situations. If you thank him, God's sovereign over everything, so he's allowed those circumstances into your life for a reason, unknown to you or I, but for a reason, for our good. It comes right, the Bible tells us that many, many times. Again, you can listen to it. You can put it up in your head. You can say that's the truth, but do you live that truth? If you don't live it, you're only half there. <laughs> and you got to be all the way there. <laughs> okay, so yielding yourself to my will is ultimately an act of trust. To trust God in all your circumstances. It's a tough one, tough one for me, and I know it's got to be tough for you. And some people just, they don't have that kind of trust. They still want to control everything. They want the control in their life. They want to be able to know what's going to happen to them. They want to protect themselves, okay? And all they end up doing is, in the ultimate end, is hurting themselves. Then a quote, really, from the 
in quietness and trust is your strength. In quietness and trust is your strength. And I've been reading James, the letter, of the epistle from James, Jesus' brother. <laughs> it's very short. You ought to read that in the Bible. It's just it's very easy reading. It's not hard, not, not as deep as some of the other books, but it says it all. Faith without works is dead. You can have all the faith you want. If you don't put that faith into action with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ, because you have to have his help to do it, your faith is dead. It means nothing to God. In the end, he's still hoping that you'll learn to take the faith and put it into action. And if you open your ears, open your eyes, you'll see that. And these, these words were sculptured by the Lord through some quotes from the Bible, one from Psalm 116, verses 5 through 7. And that says, The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple-hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Praise God. That is amazing grace right there, brothers and sisters. Be at rest once more, O oh my soul, for the Lord has, be, has been good to you. That's true. Not just intellectual. For me, I got plenty of those. Here's from Ephesians 5, verse 20. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I got to go to the dictionary on that one. Always giving thanks to God, God the Father for everything. We thank fate too many times, thinking, wow, that's great, good thing happened. I was lucky. There's no luck, folks. This is all sculptured right from the beginning. God made it all. There's no, no, no chance. You're not going to meet people today in your life by chance. They're all put there for a reason. And you got to learn. You got to figure it out. And if you want to figure it out, there's one place to go that will give you all the answers, and that's to Jesus Christ, the Savior. That's the only way you're going to get all the answers. Okay, and then from Isaiah 30, verse 15. This is Old Testament, and the Psalm was Old Testament also. Um, this is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. He's talking to, in these, that would be a verse where he's talking to people that don't, didn't want any of that. Okay? Repentance and rest. Huh? That's too simple. Salvation? Oh, I get salvation if I go out, work hard, get a lot of money, buy a house, get more money, buy more stuff. Buy, you know, my life is good. You know, my family, I got all kinds of insurances. I'm protected in every possible way. And then here comes death on the door. Knock, knock. Here I am. Let's go. There's no insurance for that except Jesus Christ. That's it. Period. Uh, Brother Anthony, I'm going to send this up actually onto the internet. I didn't get to do the one I did last night, so I'll get one to do to you today. It's kind of a, it'll be a little different format than this, although this I got, 
I expanded this one quite a bit. But anyway, listen to it and uh, let me know what you think. And uh, Anthony and I kind of, the Spirit's working with him strong and the Spirit works with me strong. And I know that the Spirit's working with uh, Mark and Gail and uh, I know the Spirit works with Vinny. And uh, even though I don't see Karen very much, I'm, I'm sure the Spirit's working with her. And I know just from listening to Sharon talk, the Spirit works for Sharon. Actually, Michael, who has on the third floor, I know the Spirit's working with him, but they, they, the Spirit won't step on our free will. He can't. We have to yield. Until you yield, and Michael hasn't yielded yet, he knows he has it up here, but he hasn't yielded and taken advantage yet. He does a lot of great things, but the Lord actually, he, his, his works are strong. His faith is strong intellectually. He needs to monitor that and bring it into alignment with uh, the Lord. And I've offered my, you know, come talk to me, come spend some time with me, Michael. Uh, not that I'm so good, but at least you're with someone, you know, you can either choose some old friends where the problems exist, or you can choose the new friends where the problems don't exist. It's a real Jesus thing right there, brother. <laughs> and uh, who else? Oh, there's so many. I, I could... I've met an awful lot of people, and uh, the Lord's moving me right now in different areas, and uh, so I'll try to keep everybody informed, because this is my life with the Lord. You know, 15 years ago, he set this in motion, and it's been, as, as I surrender, more and stuff happens. The more you surrender, the more the Lord can use you as that branch to to do what good he wants done in this world. But it's going to be his, not yours, not mine. It can't be. If it is, it's going to fail. You're going to have lots of thoughts. <laughs> My mind, <laughs> some nights I don't even sleep thinking about the things I want to do for the Lord. It's funny because <clears throat> some of those things I don't think about them again, all of a sudden I see them happen in my life. From my efforts, no. From the Lord's efforts, yes. Most important. Takes me out of the picture and out of the responsibility. My responsibility was to ask and to learn how to receive. Praise God. Simplicity is the keynote to heaven. The keynote in every song, there's a keynote that tells you what key the song is in. Simplicity in Jesus, Jesus' song, is the keynote. <laughs> you musicians will probably get that one. <laughs> Anthony, I know you're going to get that one. All right. <clears throat> Well, I've gone on for 18 minutes now, almost 19. And uh, I could talk, and actually I will probably be talking more. Uh, not that it's so important that I talk, but uh, I think it's important that Christians come together. Yeah, we're too divided. Right now the Lord has me working uh, uh, some things he wants worked. And um, Christians have all divided up into little pockets, and they don't want to... They're all afraid of each other. Fear is evil, folks. Period. If a Christian fears a Christian, there's something seriously wrong with those Christians. Seriously wrong. That is not approved by God. Okay. Anybody got any gripes with me? Call me, email me, and let's talk the Bible. Find it in the Bible that tells me I'm not supposed to be doing or saying what I'm saying or that I'm saying something wrong and I read it and I agree with you, I will change immediately. But if I say something that you don't like, but you can 
then you have to look at it in the Bible and say, well, you know what? You're right. That's what we're all supposed to do to each other as Christians, support each other. Does that happen? No. Well, I've, I've contacted a few churches already. And that's not happening. Okay. They've all got their own little thing. Their own Jesus. There's only one Jesus. And this world is not heaven. It's not, but he's the head of it. So it's the church. If he's the head of the church, okay, even as fallen as this world is and will destroy itself eventually. Got to do it. All right, brethren. And I got to call you brethren because I, I, that's another subject top, uh, another subject matter that I'll probably go into. Because uh, anyway, I won't go into that. I'll talk to you, Anthony, on that one, <laughs> and then you can review it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Have a great day, everybody. Peace in the Lord. And uh, remember, this is a day He made just for you and just for me. I'm going to open my eyes and ears on my day. You do the same. God bless. Love you all.